Hey everyone, it's Greg again. Uh, I'm bringing you a two-part review today. Uh, first part's going to be on my XM Studios Lady Death that I just received today. And then the next one will be on Thanos. And at that point, I should have them both together so everybody can see what they both look like uh, up close. Uh, we'll start out... Uh, basically backing away because she is a very tall piece for a quarter scale she measures in at just under 32 inches tall but she's also up on a pedestal from the base uh, basically almost probably half that distance she keys in basically right there We'll get a little bit better as we uh, move up the statue. She is, she was honestly the one, the piece that I wanted the most out of the pair. She is gorgeous from top to bottom. Uh, we'll start down here at the bottom and go around the base and show you everything that's built into this humongous base that just allows her to tower over everything. It's, she's perched on, well, basically it's supposed to look like she's floating above this rock mound that you just see two skeletons in here that are just built into the base. Let me see if I get a little bit closer. You can see the teeth and but the base itself is mainly it's just meant to be a mountain or something that she's floating above that has these two skulls just dead and decrepit built into it. Each rib right right here all key in individually. So it's a bunch of little tiny pieces that you just have to match up. Uh, the good thing about each one though with XM, let me see if I can get it to focus in, is they letter and number each one and it's on both locations. It's, this one is, let me see if I can, there we go, number four. So this bottom section all right here, numbers in. So it's one through, I think nine. And then the upper section here they try to do colors on it, but it's also letters. So if the colors don't match up, because the, the, if you notice, each peg is a tiny little peg that's supposed to slide in. So it's kind of hard for the paint to stay and match up. But each one of them keys into tiny little holes that are down there. Nothing magnetized, just kind of keys in and slides right into place. Some of them might seem a little loose, but it's also not like you're really going to move them around too much. So as you can see, they're all kind of in there really well. Took a little while to uh, get them all out to make sure because some of them actually moved in the box while I was unpacking so after I got everything situated I still had two keyholes left open so I was like Ugh. did I lose them did I break them did I <laughs> did I crumple them up in the paper that it comes in but everything so far is in top condition and it looks amazing as you can see the rocks got the brown the dirt and it almost makes it look like it's a rust, but it's it's just it's mainly just rocks 
That's all. It, it's not difficult. It's just dirt and rock. So I'll keep spinning around. Keen it up. But then as we move up the base, you'll get to the other skeleton, which in itself was... Let me see if I can pull this one out because some of these key in. So this one... This is the only one of the two uh, skeletons that actually come out. But the facial expression just on something that's meant to be lost in the base is amazing in itself. The teeth, the dirt, and the grime just makes it all look so old and dated. But it, it all... That head was magnetized in, so that stained there perfectly. But like I said before, these ones are all just keyed in. So some of them kind of are feel a little loose, but you're not really gonna move them around. You're not gonna grab from that location or anything like that. All right now we'll move on, because the next the next major part of this is these purple and black smoke cloud that's basically coming and moving itself around her like she just appeared out of like thin air the the paint is kind of flat but it's in person it's amazing it pulls the whole statue together and it's actually three different pieces that key in different spots but they connect so well that you got that one seam right there that's that's connected and as you can see the other one kind of comes back here and wraps its way up here you actually on one of them the high one the one that goes up the back side here you actually have to key her in first and then wrap that smoke around her to get it to all match up and not uh, rub against each other. But the smoke in itself is, it adds so much texture and almost movement to the statue. It's definitely, it's not a useless item on this statue. It, it really brings her together. Now we'll work our way up to Lady Death herself and just kind of work all the way up and see all the texture to consider the outfit, the robe that she's in, the black and how there's so much texture in it and all the folds that are right there. They're all over the place. It's not a form-fitting outfit, but to her it is. But it's still the black dress that she wears. It's worn and weathered and everything just kind of looks amazing. And like I said, she keys in right over here it's a pretty big key too it runs all the way down the leg and then so with her leaning forward at that position that she's in she's not really it doesn't seem like she's going anywhere there's no it's not loose it's no it's no movement everything so far from the base up keys in really well now we'll work our way up and get to the cape, which is three pieces. They all key in right up here at her shoulders. So you've got the left side, you got a right side, and then you got the main spot, which as I turn it around is 
this section right down the middle, which is the key for her upper body. That, that section right there keys in, move it, I would turn it back around. It keys in just up here that forms like the upper section. And then each side, each side actually keys into that center cape. But these capes in themselves are amazing. I'm so happy that they didn't go with a fabric cape or anything like that. This is all sculpted and painted. Uh, the funny part was it's, you almost swear it feels kind of like a, a thick paper mache because I went to pull it out of the box and I, I ended up catching one of the ends right here and you can feel how like delicate it is and it, it felt like it moved and I was holding my breath that I didn't break it just trying to pull it out of the box. Here's the cape in itself. The cape is, honestly, she's probably, she's over 20 inches wide with the cape, but it's not heavy at all, which is nice. So I don't feel like it'll ever be kind of a leaning issue because of the, the cape itself. But each, you see the, the weather, the fabric, it gives it a fabric look without it you having to pose it or anything like that, which I love. It's worn and torn and just weathered beyond belief. All the holes and are consistent all the way through to where you see all the holes and they've all got the torn pieces and the coloring and the wear to it so but it's she's just an amazing looking statue even up top at the hood now this is the the regular the the collectors I have the uh, the EX that I'll now switch and show in a, in a minute but these the hands and the skin the skin almost feels like it's a porcelain it's so it almost makes it look like she's such a delicate character when she when she has this look you get to the facial features and you could see just the skin isn't perfectly flat or anything like that. They actually put texture around the jawline and it shows that she's not meant to be perfect. But the features on her I mean, I can't get past like how the skin looks and how it, the feel of it, the feel is what amazes me. It doesn't feel like anything, like any other statue that I have. It almost feels like I have like a porcelain doll that I have to be gentle with. Each arm keys in right in that location. I'll switch features now. And you'll get to see what she looks like with the, the skeleton features, which is pretty. It's definitely amazing looking. Now this is where you get the complete opposite. It's just, it's a skull and bones and you've got, you've got 
the contours into the bones and things cut into it. It feels like the bone isn't perfectly smooth. It's just I mean, it looks like what you expect a skeleton to look like. I'll go back to the face. The face, like the eye sockets, how empty they are. And the teeth. I mean, the EX is, <laughs> it's scary looking. I probably won't ever really display her with this, but getting them both together, it could be something that every once in a while I'll swap around. The wife kind of made a joke that with the skeleton and her actual death features, she's like, why does she have curves? Why does she have uh, a chest? Because you figure that's that's fat it should be gone if she's all if she's just a uh, bone it shouldn't be there and that's uh my wife's trying to reason with it and i'm like eh, it's a comic book character they're gonna always have some sort of features on it but in the end this statue is <laughs> takes my breath away i mean i'm this is one that I knew I couldn't miss out on. And I can't wait to unbox Thanos and have them together. This also comes with the art piece that you saw earlier. But XM's also a wonderful picture of how everything's supposed to pack back up. So this is a, a must for, I think, companies moving forward. So and I'll give you one last close up of her just regular portrait, which you see how the hood, it has so much texture to it. I mean, it looks just like fabric. But now it's time to unbox Thanos and I'll do a review for him and show you what they look like together. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.